everybody, and welcome to another episode of Rob's World of Boxing. Let's get it. All right, I'm going to get to this fight night preview video. Uh, the fight is going to take place Saturday, July 9th, 2022 on Showtime. It's a PBC event, Al Heyman, all those guys. It's for the WBC Featherweight Championship of the World. Featherweight is 126 pounds, if you didn't. No, it's going to take place in San Antonio, Texas at the Alamo Dome, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. 9 p.m. Eastern Time. As I stated, the fight is between Mark McSayo and Ray Vargas. All right, let's jump into it. Mark McSayo, he's 24-0 with 16 KOs, 27 years of age. He's an orthodox-style fighter. He stands at 5'6 with a 68-inch reach. He's from the Philippines. His last fight was a majority decision win versus Gary Russell Jr. when Gary Russell Jr. was 31-1. That fight transpired January 20, 22nd of 2022. A key opponent Mark McSayo has on his resume, I would have to say, is Gary Russell Jr. Um, yeah, man. He became the champ in that fight against Gary Russell Jr. for his first time, you know, ever. Mark McSayo being. And, um, put his name on the map, man. Um, Gary Russell Jr., he's a, you know, a savvy vet at the weight, man. And beating Gary Russell Jr. is nothing to, you know, look over, man. That's a big feat. At the featherweight division, man. He was featherweight champ for years. Um, also, Mark McSayo is a Manny Pacquiao protege. He's been mentored by Manny Pacquiao. Being he's from the Philippines. All right, let's jump into his opponent. Ray Vargas. Ray Vargas is 35-0 and 0 with 22 KOs, 31 years of age. He's an orthodox-style fighter. He stands at 5'10 and a half with a 70 and a half inch reach. He's from Mexico. His last fight was a unanimous decision win versus Leonardo B.S., who was 21-4 and 4 at the time they cla clashed uh, November of 2021. A key, uh, I was looking on Ray Vargas' record for key uh, opponents. He has none. Um, I'll say Mark McSayo is going to be his key opponent, in my opinion, after this fight. Uh, Mark McSayo, man, um, I've seen a few of his fights before Gary Russell Jr., and I've seen the Gary Russell Jr. fight. Uh, he, like I said, he's uh, been mentored by Manny Pacquiao, so he has that herky-jerky style. He'll jump in and, you know, jump out and Try to, you know, catch some angles like that. Freaking, um, yeah, man, he's a very good um, explosive fighter. He has some power to him, too. His uh, He was fighting, I forget who he was fighting. I think Seha, Seha. And he um, buckled Seha, man, in the corner, man. Seha was winning all night. And, um, yeah, until Mark McSayo caught up with him and buckled him in the corner, man. Um, yeah, he got some power on him. I.E. Manny Pacquiao. All right, and um, Ray Vargas, man, he's um, he's 35 and 0, as you see. And, um, yeah, man, he's a pretty good fighter. I feel like he has some flaws. He'll pull back and keep his chin in the air. He kind of, you know, kind of rangy in there. So I feel like he's um, growing accustomed to his um, opponents being shorter than him and not being able to reach him. So he'll just pull straight back. But against, like, a guy like Mark McSayo, that might be a problem. So let's see if – um. Mark McSayo could take advantage of that um, defensive lapse or Ray Vargas can, you know, cover it up with his other skills, man, and pull out the win, man, against Mark McSayo. I feel like, um, honestly, I feel like that's what's going to happen. Mark McSayo is going to catch um, Ray Vargas, pull him back, and um, it's going to be all she wrote, man. I got a this quick prediction. I got a uh, ninth round KO win. For your winner, Mark McSayo, in my opinion. All right? I don't know why I said winner like that. Like, the nigga already just won. But, uh, yeah, man, that's my opinion. He going to win. All right? Let's get into their undercard. Uh, well, I say co-main, man. This fight, the next fight I'm going to talk about is co-main. The undercard is pretty good, bro. But, yeah, all right, let's get into this, the co-main. It's a featherweight fight. Featherweight is 126 pounds, if you didn't know. It's a 12-round contest between Brandon Figueroa and Carlos Castro. Brandon Figueroa is 22-1 and 1 
with one draw. He's 25 years of age. He's orthodox style fighter. Stands at five foot eight with a 72 and a half inch reach. He's from West West Local. Yeah, West Local, Texas. I ain't never heard of that. West Laco, Texas. There we go. West Laco, Texas. Um, his last fight was a majority decision loss versus Stephen Fulton Jr., which is nothing to be ashamed about when Stephen Fulton Jr. was 19 and 0. And that fight transpired November 27th of 2021. Uh, in my opinion, that was the fight of the year. That year, it was a back and forth contest. A hell of a fight, man. If you didn't check it out, go check it out. All right. Um, a key opponent. Brandon Figueroa has on his resume is um I would have to say is um well besides um Stephen Fulton Jr. Luis Neri Luis Neri he fought Luis Neri when Luis Neri was thirty one and zero and he scored a seventh round KO win versus Luis Neri May of twenty twenty one. Um, Brandon Figueroa brother is also a fighter. His name is Omar Figueroa. If you didn't know, um he's no Brandon Figueroa though. He's a kind of um. Like a journeyman kind of sorta. Of. Not not too, you know, sure of his record. I think he didn't lost like about three or four fights though, man. But yeah. He does have a brother boxing. So they are boxing family, man. Alright, let's get to his opponent. Carlos Castro. Carlos Castro is 27 and 1, 12 KOs. Uh, 28 years of age, he's orthodox style fighter, stands at five foot seven with a 70 inch reach from Phoenix, Arizona. But he was born in Mexico. His last fight was a split decision loss. I repeat, a loss versus Luis Neri when Luis Neri was 31 and one, coming off his loss versus Brandon Figueroa, Luis Neri being. And that fight transpired February of this year, 2022. Um, I'll say a key opponent for uh, Carlos Castro is Luis Neri. Even though he lost that fight, um, that was some good experience getting in there with Luis Neri. Luis Neri is a very good fighter, man. And uh, yeah, man, he he lost in a split decision. So yeah, some good judges have you know at least one judge have having him winning the fight. So yeah, man, that's some good experience against Luis Neri. Plus, Luis Neri already been in there with Brandon uh, Figueroa. So that's like a good barometer fight. Hopefully, uh, yeah, barometers don't matter because uh, Carlos Castro lost and Brandon Figueroa win, won against Luis Neri. So he's trying to get the win in this fight. Carlos Castro being. Uh, this is Brandon Figueroa's first fight at 126 pounds. So let's see how he fare against these uh, bigger guys at featherweight. Um, he said... Making 122 was becoming too strenuous for him, so he wanted to move up to 126. He says his power is going to translate. It's going to be actually more powerful at 126 because he was killing himself cutting weight to 122, man. But uh, I feel like uh, fucking uh. Yeah, I feel like my guy Brandon Figueroa should make easy work. Carlos Castro, no lie, Brandon Figueroa is a dog. Um, he just come forward. He, he comes forward nonstop and um, throws a million punches a fight. So, man, I, I I don't really see too many people stopping that uh, unless you're a superior boxer. And, uh, yeah, man, got some other superior skills, man. But uh, I don't see Carlos, Ca uh, Carlos Castro being a superior boxer or having, you know, nothing too special to slow Brandon Figueroa down, man. So, my prediction is Brandon Figueroa winning that fight uh, in a knockout. I say, uh, yeah, man. seventh, eighth round knockout win for um, Brandon Figueroa, man. In my opinion. All right, let's get to the next fight on the card. Uh, it's a lightweight fight at 135 pounds. 135 pounds is lightweight, as I just stated. But it's a 10-round contest. All right, it's between Frank Martin and Jackson Marinas. Frank Martin is 15 and 0 with 11 KOs, 27 years of age. He's a South Poise, stands at 5 foot 8 with a 68-inch reach from Detroit, but he's living in Indianapolis, Indiana. His last fight was a fourth round TKO win versus Rom Romero Duno, who was 24 and 2. Um, January of this year, 2022, a key opponent Frank Martin had. I was looking at, I didn't see any key opponents Frank Martin had actually. Um, but yeah, it's still early in his career, man. He's well, he's 27 years old, so he's need to hurry up. But, um, yeah, man, 
Now's the time. He's getting, he's fighting stiffer and stiffer competition each fight. So I can see him heading in that direction. But, um, uh, let's get to his opponent, Jackson Marinas. He's 19 and 2 with 7 KOs. He's an Orthodox style fighter, stands at 5 foot 10 with a 69 and a half inch reach from the Dominican Republic. Um, his last fight was a six round TKO, well, a six round KO loss, sorry about that, versus Richard Kumi when Richard Kumi was 29 and 3. Um, and that fight transpired February of 2021. A key opponent Jackson Marinas has on his record was Romero, Rolando, Rolly Romero. Rolando, what the fuck is it? Yeah, Rolando Romero. When, um, Rolly was, um, 11 and 0, um, he beat Jackson Marinas, um, in the unanimous decision. But I feel like Jax Marinas really beat Rowley, man. Um, I feel like he got robbed in that fight. It was a clear robbery. Uh, the ref stole that fight from him, man. Um, now he's, you know, on the verge of suffering uh, three, you know, losses in a row, man. Because he had that loss against uh, Rowley, which I feel he won. Then he had the loss against uh, my guy Richard Comey. Now he's, you know. In danger of losing to uh, Frank Martin, cause Frank Martin the dog, man. And I feel like quick prediction. I feel like Frank Martin is gonna beat Jax Marinas and put that third loss in a row on my guy. And, uh, yeah, after that, man, I don't know where you go, man. You you know you just like a a gatekeeper at that point. But uh, yeah, man, Frank Martin's a dog, man. So I feel like quick, yeah, like quick prediction. I feel like uh, Frank Martin, man, he gonna. Uh, win this fight by knockout. All, I feel like all these fights on this card, because everybody go to sleep in front of all these people, but ain't, ain't none of these cards going to the card, in my opinion. I say Frank Martin by, uh, man, it might be early. I, third round knockout. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump out on the limb. Third round knockout for Frank Martin. But yeah, man. Nonetheless, it's gonna be an exciting night. Oh yeah, quick note. Uh, they got a. They gonna have a uh, another. They gonna have a heavyweight fight on the uh, zone at two p.m. Eastern time. It's gonna take place in London at the O2 Arena. It's gonna be between Derek Chisora and um, Cobra Pulif. So uh, yeah, man, if you're interested in journeyman, <laughs> you know. But nah, if you're interested in um, some heavyweights, man. You know, a little action there on the back end of their career, man. They're both kind of long in the tooth. Check it out, man. It's going to be, on, um, on, like I said, on the zone, 2, 2 p.m. Eastern time. But, yeah, man. As I was saying, man, it's going to be a um, good-ass card on Showtime. Man, that's a good card, man. Uh, it's a pretty exciting night of boxing, man. If you can, check it out, man. Tune in. But, yeah. Like. Comment, subscribe, all that shit, people. Rob's World of Boxing. Yeah.